You're listening to Snyder & Associates Podcast Series, a civil engineering planning and design firm focused on thinking beyond engineering to improve quality of life within the communities we serve. This episode's hosts are Jeff Walters and Lindsay Beeman. Let's kick this off then, Lindsay. Let's start with these four questions. What is your biggest industry or sector issue pertaining to environmental regulations right now? Within the water and wastewater sector, I would say the biggest issue that we have is the changing water quality standards as it relates to what goes into our existing bodies of water, our receiving streams, and how we're able to fund that and meet those requirements in this changing environment. And that's been an issue for really decades since the Clean Water Act really started is how do wastewater facilities or those types of facilities that have wastewater discharge permits get rid of their waste? Because pre-Clean Water Act, you could do whatever you want with it. You dump it in the river, dump it in the lake, and, and it's no big deal. But you know, as we have moved into the 21st century and we've got a lot of technology these days, the constituents that go into the, into the water through our waste streams are just getting tighter and tighter. So yeah, yeah. That's, it's definitely been around for a while. And it's never going away as long as the Clean Water Act is still involved. Yeah, and I think as we further educate ourselves as to what our impacts are, what we can do better, what technologies are available to us, yeah, we continue to improve upon that. So even though the Clean Water Act hasn't changed a whole a whole lot over the decades, as consumers and users and, and environmental stewards, we figured out ways to do better and to change the rules to help ourselves. As we dissect the Clean Water Act and especially the, the NPDES permits related to the wastewater facilities. Have you noticed any particular constituents that are getting tougher for your clients? The ammonias and the dissolved oxygen and as well as disinfection, those are the things that are, are a challenge. But on the water treatment side as well, it's it's the byproducts of water treatment that in the past we didn't think much of what we were putting back in the rivers and streams from drinking water. But now that's become more uh, something that we're watching, especially in smaller streams, the impacts that those have on the receiving streams. You know, I know back in the day when I was working with Mid-America Energy Company and some other clients uh, that had uh, coal combustion residue, CCR, or other types of material, the EPA and, and DNR just didn't know what to do with them. So there became these massive stockpiles of waste byproduct that wasn't quite a solid and wasn't quite a liquid. And we estimated it could take you know years or even decades to dry out this material. Have you seen those types of issues at uh, your wastewater facility treatment plants? Nothing that we're really uh, focusing on at this point. I mean, there are always the deeper discussions. Now we're going to get really deep into water quality here is with the um, pharmaceuticals or other micro products within the waste stream that we're putting into our receiving streams that right now we don't quantify them well and we don't know what to do about them or how to treat them. But it's one of those topics where you think, hey, 50 years from now, we'll be looking back and saying, can you believe we used to dump those into the rivers? Because I'm guessing that we'll have that conversation later that what we're doing today is crazy to us tomorrow. Do you think it's maybe just a component of technology today that we just we're just having a difficult time quantifying the the constituents from like, say, pharmaceuticals when people are dumping them down the down the drains and flushing the toilet? Yeah, it's it's the technology to to one to do something about it. Um, the interest in tracking it because, you know, ultimately it comes down to it. If we can barely fund what we have now for our current needs, it's hard to create new legislation that's going to be more impactful when we don't have a good idea of what that is costing us on the other end. So I think that there's a lot of hesitation to to do much more with environmental regulations as we continue to pick off what we have already undertaken as a as a society that we need to correct. So I think that's also part of the the discussion. So what are some common environmental hurdles you and your clients are currently working through? Well, in addition to meeting, you know, permit limitations for like I've talked about the the new, you know, new compliance, new regulations, maybe that uh, different facilities need to get up to speed with. When you think about, especially with when it comes to sewage conveyance and wastewater treatment, a lot of that process is always going to be located in low-lying areas near rivers and streams, um, especially near rivers. And so we deal with a lot of hurdles in construction, in conveyance, in being able to excavate without polluting the receiving streams, 
in being able to keep our rivers protected uh, without flooding our sites, because obviously a flooded treatment plant isn't going to do anybody any good. So there's a lot of hurdles in the location and the needs of expanding these facilities. A lot of those decisions you talk about too, I mean, they're so, um, they're so intermingled on the discussion of should we build this here and how this will be, you know, will be impacted by flooding. We have to go down dirt and certain roads of, of making these determinations far, way farther than we would normally do. And we might find out we're hitting dead ends. And so you almost have to go down the road the wrong direction several times before you can find out what is the best way to make a decision. Because sometimes clients will ask, well, why didn't you think to do that? And it wasn't that we didn't go down that path. We found out we're hitting a major obstacle in permitting that isn't beneficial anymore. And, and so it's, it's, it's amazing how often you have to go down these routes to really find out what's the best big picture solution. How, how does or how can our environmental business unit at Snyder support your clients in these types of projects? Well, the permitting obviously is a, a big assistance in helping to provide that baseline guidance when a project is starting up when you can foresee challenges that might not be overcome based on previous experience for starters. Experience on any project is is so valuable because you can you look at you know the big picture and say, don't go that direction. You're gonna waste your time and money. Wetland mitigation is a huge impactful stream mitigation. Um, when we have to do some of these projects and we know that we're gonna have disturbances, helping to eyesight that ahead of time, what is going to be the the least impactful or the most beneficial to a client and having that that broad uh, experience in a team that helps us to really educate them. Because it's one thing for me to say, hey, my environmental business unit team says, don't do that. But it's another thing to have your experience when you can sit down and help explain that to our clients. That's been very helpful. Yeah, I mean, the, the one thing that I find is probably the most successful is when the environmental business unit can get involved early in that project, especially when you've got these long lead projects you know you've got a, a deadline you have to meet and while a year or two or five years may seem like a long time once we start doing the environmental documentation with boots on the ground doing field work shovel tests and identifying streams and wetlands we inadvertently add that layer of complexity to your project and that level of complexity then also adds a high cost potentially to your client as well. So it's important for us to you know, get in there early, understand what's going on so that you don't get too far down that design path and then have to redo it. Exactly. Yeah, we talk about very often that five years is a very typical project length for water and wastewater treatment type projects, especially when it comes to meeting a compliance schedule. And clients think that that's all the time in the world, but from reality, I know that you need every second of that. And if you're ever going to make it on time, so yeah, they they realize how many different layers there are, and how important it is to have a really good foundation started early with an environmental conscious thought process, as well as funding, and all the different layers that that uh, any engineering has involved. What are some of the foreseeable changes you anticipate? within your client portfolio in the industry? I think that we're going to see a continued trend of more and more environmental needs, hurdles, awareness, where we need to comply to really take care of our future earth and the needs of our future generations. I know that we haven't really even touched on nutrients within the state of Iowa, but that's something that is becoming more and more of a conversation what are we going to do with the nutrients that we're sending to the the streams from not only wastewater plants, but non-point sources where can we do something to better our environment? And that might be coming from wetland projects. That might be coming from more treatments, compliance projects. That might be something that we have yet to discover. So I think that we're going to uncover more needs that we don't know of now. We're going to have longer lead times on the things that we are doing, and we're going to need a lot more experts within the environmental realm to help us guide us through all of those needs. Maybe not in Iowa, we're not as reliant as, as you know, river water for source water, but there are many communities that do rely on river water for source water, and we need to protect our own selves from what we're putting into the environment because we're ultimately getting that back from the environment, maybe not directly in our own backyards, but somebody else in our communities or country 
is impacted by whatever we're putting out into the environment. So we're going to become more aware of that as well. I think we have an opportunity, you know, here at Snyder to work with our clients to reduce our, our waste streams, reduce our waste loads, and hopefully we make a better product for the client because that's really our ultimate goal is to see the success of our client. Well, thank you, Lindsay. I appreciate your time today, and I hope that uh, we can continue these conversations in greater depth. Maybe we can talk about uh, some specific projects down the road and maybe even get the chance to have some of our clients talk, the two of us, and see if we can continue on these conversations and have a better understanding of what our clients really need. Thank you for listening to Snyder & Associates podcast series, a civil engineering, planning, and design firm focused on thinking beyond engineering to improve quality of life within the communities we serve. Find content related to this episode on snyder-associates.com.